What is up, guys? Welcome back to another Reezy Resales live show. Yes, I got a face tattoo. What do you guys think about that face tattoo? Is that coming in loud and clear? Um, yeah, so we're going to talk about some things in this episode. Before we get into it, I just want to let you guys know, no, my Amazon account didn't get suspended, but that is a question I did get today by someone, and I'm going to answer that question in this video and tell you guys what you should do if your Amazon account does get suspended and how to handle that. Also, I got a gigantic box today in the mail. Gigantic. So this is from Pizza Skateboards. Let's see if I can balance it on my head. And this is nine pounds. This is a nine pound freaking box, okay? And I'm gonna give you guys a second to show up into the live show. And I'm gonna go into answering all kinds of questions, including what you should do when your Amazon account gets suspended how to get your Amazon account back, and what to do if you can't get your Amazon account back. So let me go ahead and open this box because it's just freaking ridiculous. And while I'm opening it, if you guys have, hold on, I can't even scoot it out. Shout out Baby Beard Club real quick for this shirt, peep game, get shit done. You feel me? So we're going to open this giant box. It weighs nine pounds. It's definitely got at least one skateboard in it, but I think it might have two or three or maybe it's just a box full of rocks. And I don't know who shipped this to me, so I really hope that there's a note inside of this box. Inside of this gig Listen to this. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and open it. Face tattoo. Uh, it's just a temporary tattoo. That's my next clickbait YouTube video. It's going to be called I Got a Face Tattoo. Temporary tattoo. I also got one on the neck, too. And on the hand. I went hard on the temporary tattoos. But... Let's get into these uh, these questions. If you guys have any questions, this is going to be a standard live show. I'm in the new studio, which is only partially set up. Check this out, though. I got a new microphone. Look at this. Your boy got that standard, the Shure SM7B. What's up, guys? Welcome to the show. Only it's not plugged in yet, but it will be plugged in, and we're going to be looking super proper with this new microphone, but it's not working yet. So um, I need it. My mix board shows up tomorrow, but let's go ahead and open this giant box and get into this immense hustle. Today, we're going to talk about what to do if you get suspended from Amazon, how to get your account back and a bunch of other good stuff that everybody should know. Oh, I legit do want to get a face tattoo though. I don't know why. Part of me feels like once you get a face tattoo, you can never go back. What happens to inventory if you get suspended and you can't get it back? I don't know what Amazon does. It Do they sell it? Hopefully you can get it back eventually. This box is freaking loaded full of stuff. Like absolutely loaded. Let me first go and see if they're in the packing slip, if there's any. Okay, so it's from Pizza Skateboards, shipped to Reezy Resells, and there's no note. So if you sent this to me and you didn't, I mean, I love whoever sent me this. This is amazing. I'm not a pro skateboarder, so I don't get boxes ever, you know what I mean? Um, I used to do filming professionally for skateboarding, and I did get some boxes back then, but... Whoever sent this, uh, whoever sent this, what is this? That's not a tattoo. That's just one of my fat eyebrow hairs. Whoever sent this to me, you are amazing. And hopefully you will review, reveal yourself. So we got a hat right here. Luck hard. Luck hard. I believe that's a hardware, hardware manufacturer. Little, uh, what is this? Six, little six panel. All right. All right. Let's keep it moving. Keep it moving. We got a large uh, white tea pizza with that uh, that S thing we all used to draw, but it's the Z. Feel me? I'm so pumped. I'm so pumped right now. I got a, a large hoodie. Let's open this thing up because I can't see what the graphic is. 
I literally just got my seller's account and before I even listed anything, my account got suspended. The reason they stated was because there was an account similar that wasn't allowed to be selling. Yeah, I think I talked to you about this in DM, did I not? Okay, so this is a large all black hoodie with the most simplest of logos. Just a slice of pie embroidered right there. That's it. That's the only branding on the whole thing. This is so dope. Wow, so we got a shirt. We got a hat, we got a hoodie. We got some hard luck socks, some flaming socks. Red and blue Jayhawks colors over here. What's up, hard luck? Shout out hard luck. And we got another hard luck shirt. Dude, whoever sent this, you are the truth. The champion of the century. Check this one out. Hard luck, kept it in dark. Kept it in dark and fed shit. Lurk hard, white tea. This will make it through like one day of my life before it has to be tie-dyed because I'm just a dirty little skater boy. Little. All right, and two decks. I knew there was more than one deck. There's two decks in here. This is, this is amazing. All right, so deck number one. Woo! Pizza skateboards. What is this, an eight inch? This is the size of boards I ride. First, check out the top graphic. The top graphic is, is, a, is a cheesy pizza. And the bottom graphic is Mickey Mouse and some, some breasts and an American flag. Uh, Mickey, ghetto Mickey here, has a Patron bottle. His necklace says come, and apparently that's a water pipe, I'm guessing, but he's loaded. So this is pretty sick. <laughs> skateboard companies are so awesome and this is the other one this one is dope resellers will appreciate this look at this boom get that you get that what polo bear kicking it pizza sport not polo sport it's the polo bear kicking it right in your face oh I am so dope. No, Mickey was holding a Patron bottle, not a Mickey. So thank you so much to whoever sent this to me. I don't know. I don't really – if it was pizza skateboards, that's like news to me. But I believe one of you must have ordered me a bunch of stuff from pizza skateboards and sent it to me. Or maybe someone works for pizza skateboards. Either way, I am entirely appreciative – of it i will either skate those decks i think i might hang up the polo bear one just because that is so incredibly dope let's get into these questions guys and uh i am going to drink some coffee mm. nothing like 9 p.m coffee that's still hot tat your eyelids all right so Without further ado, let me answer that first question, which got all of you guys to watch this video. I'm sorry for the clickbait, but you know how this YouTube shit goes. You know what you signed up for. The important part is you're here now. So the question is, hey, I'm an Amazon seller. My account was suspended. What will I do? How can I open a second account after suspending? So that's a two-part question. And the first answer is, what will you do? So you need to submit an appeal to Amazon and you need to also submit a plan of action. And essentially a plan of action basically says you admit what you did wrong and you say why you did it wrong and the steps that you're going to put into place to make sure that never happens again. That is called a plan of action. And even if you didn't do anything wrong, you need to say you did do something wrong and you know you did it wrong and you know why and this is how you're going to make it so it doesn't happen again. That's just the only way you can do it. If you're having trouble contacting seller support, you might want to, besides you doing email, chat support, um, phone calls, is reach out to Jeff Bezos through Jeff Bezos. I believe it's Jeff at Amazon um, email. Don't quote me on that. I'm lucky enough to not ever have had to do that. But you could just Google Jeff Bezos email. I'm sure he has a whole team of people dedicated to monitoring that email, and that's not his actual email. But it can save your ass. Secondly, to open a second Amazon account is a very difficult thing to do because they have ID verification now. Essentially, to open a second Amazon account, you need 
another human being to let you open an account in their name. And it's actually pretty much their account and you're going to operate it. And But they're going to get tax implications in their name. So you're obviously going to have to pay those taxes. And you're probably also going to give that person a cut, whether it's your mom, your uncle, your brother, your sister, your cousin, your best friend, whatever it is, you might want to get a contract signed up. But a lot of things need to be different. You cannot have the same Wi-Fi, the same, uh, the same IP address. That's the address of your internet connection. You cannot have the same Mac address. That's the address of your laptop, okay? So a way to get around this is get a new laptop and get a hotspot with a cell phone signal. Only use that laptop on that hotspot, not on your other Wi-Fi that was already banned, okay? Just dedicated hotspot that is made it up with a specific laptop that's only used for that, okay? Secondly, you're going to need a new name, new address, new bank account, and a new ID that matches all that stuff. So like I said, it's very difficult. It's harder than it used to be, but you're essentially going to have to get someone else to let you do it, or you can buy someone else's Amazon account. Now, technically, it's not legal to sell or, or not legal. Technically, it's against Amazon's terms of service to buy and sell Amazon accounts, but you can buy someone else's business and an Amazon account can be an asset for a business. So you're not actually buying the Amazon account, you're buying the business. And when you buy the business, you own all of its assets, which means you would own the Amazon account. One word of advice I have for you is if you had inventory listed on your account when it got um, suspended, do not list that in that inventory on the new account because it will flag the new account as being related to the other account. That is a huge no-no. So just make sure you don't want to get suspended, but if you do, it's hard to come back. It's possible. This is why a lot of people have multiple Amazon accounts without permission from Amazon just for this reason to safeguard it so that if they do get kicked off, it's business as usual on their second or third or fourth account. Okay. Lots of people making lots of money have more than one Amazon account without permission from Amazon. Okay. Don't tell, don't tell on them. All right. Just don't. So let's go into a couple of these other other questions that we got. So a Reezy question, what barcode scanner app are you using to find all that info on the products that you find? So I made a video. It's called, uh, what app do I use to scan products in the store? Or it's called, what app is that? I will put a link down to that in the description. But if you just go to, uh, YouTube and type Reezy, what app it's the first video, the thumbnail is yellow and it says, what app is that? Um, but if you need the link comment, if I haven't put it in there and I will put it down there for you guys to click on, it is, it's a pretty good video. I just detail all the different apps that I use to scan products in stores. Uh, next question from citizen creed says, yo Reese, two questions. I've sent my first shipment. What if there's some kind of discrepancy? Like you forgot to put a book in the box and is there any more tickets to your private event? So there is one ticket left to the Reezy ranch retreat. And if you guys want to come to that, send me an email or a DM on Instagram. And if you're serious, I will invoice you right now tonight after the show. And you can snag the last spot for details. Go to reasyresales.com slash reasy hyphen ranch. I know that's a lot to remember, but that's why you can rewind videos. So the more important part of that question, um, what if there's a discrepancy in your shipment that you send to Amazon? Don't worry. It's not a huge deal. What will happen is Amazon will basically give you a slap on the wrist and say, hey, you know, you sent more books than you were supposed to, or you sent less books than you're supposed to, or these stickers were mixed up, or the weight doesn't match. Some of those things Amazon might fine you for, um, but generally you're not going to get in too much trouble, especially if it's not a lot of mistakes and you're not perpetually doing them. So don't worry about them, but make sure you try your best to not have any discrepancies. So we send shipments, 2000, 4,000 units in, and we always have discrepancies, whether it's, we put extra items or we forgot to put some items in. There's just always some mistakes, at least with the way we do it at scale, we're still learning. Um, it's not perfect, right? So, but as long as it's not a ton of mistakes and you're not doing it again and again and again, you should be totally, totally fine. Let's see. Uh, thanks for this video, Reezy. Just wondering if you recommend selling books FBA over FBM. That's fulfilled by Amazon or fulfilled by Merchant. I just started listing books on Amazon using FBM and I sold seven the first week. Uh, now, not so much. Sales just dried up. Is that typical for new accounts? No. 
Also, can you help me understand what the shipping credits means when listing on Amazon's seller app? I am confused about if I'm offering free shipping or not. I cannot find any videos that address this. Please help. Well, I'm here to help. First out, shout out to Mr. Buys a Lot for the $10 super chat. I really appreciate that. All super chat money is used to buy the finest of IPA beers to coat my gullet with delicious liquids. Um, so first part of the question, FBM over FBA. I recommend that when you first start, you should do FBM, Fulfilled by Merchant or MF, Merchant Fulfilled. That way you can absorb your mistakes cheaper. So like, for example, if you buy a bunch of stuff and you ship it to FBA and you know you were restricted in some or you can't make money in some, et cetera, you now have to pay to have it sent back to you or pay to have it destroyed. It's a hassle, right? But if that stuff was on the shelf in your garage or in your living room or whatever, you could just delete it out of inventory and pull it off the shelf or maybe take it back to Target or Ross or Marshalls or wherever and return it. And, and basically it makes it more risk free. So I recommend everyone to do Merchant Fulfilled as a way to start because you're going to make mistakes and you want to be able to, you know, not have that affect you as much. It's just less riskier. Once you understand Merchant Fulfilled and you're tired of shipping out orders every day and you want to take it to the next level, that's when you go FBA. FBA is the way, trust me. Unless you sell a lot lower uh, margin books, then MF is going to be the way because you you can be more in control of the shipping process. There's a There's a lot of stories I've heard about huge booksellers that, for example... Uh, Better World Books. They don't sell FBA at all anymore because overnight a rule change at Amazon with the fees could lose them a million plus dollars because they sell books to make you know as little as 20 cents profit because their systems are so efficient. Amazon changes a rule overnight, they lose a million dollars. Now they have to pay to get all this inventory destroyed because it's not profitable at all because you sent it in at a certain profit calculation. Then Amazon changes the rules, it's pretty much entrapment. They'll probably get sued for it at some point. Class action lawsuit. Shout out to that pending class action lawsuit that hopefully I get paid off of. That doesn't exist yet, but it will. Um, so yeah, FBM, less risky. FBA is always going to sell faster. Um, customers love it better. Um, as far as the shipping credits go, I'm not too familiar with listing stuff in the phone. I've, I've actually never... Actually, yeah, I've listed items from the phone when I'm doing fast moving retail arbitrage products like on black Friday stuff that's going to tank. Um, but I recommend everybody go into your manage inventory page, hit the hamburger menu on the upper right, go down to shipping preferences and look at your shipping preferences. You want to understand what fees you're charging to your customers, because if you're not charging shipping, you need to make sure you build that into your shipping price. And if you are charging shipping, you need to make sure that you're not building that into your price. You know what I mean? Because Personally, we don't charge shipping because when you're pricing your inventory currently for MF, everybody or almost everybody seems to be the trend to not do uh, paid shipping. It's just free shipping. Build it into their price. And so when I'm looking at a competing offer for $6 and they have free shipping and I have $3.99 shipping, I have to go in my head and calculate you know, $6.99 minus $3.99. Okay, $2.01 is now what I have to charge to match their price. And to me, it's just more math than you need to do. If everyone is doing free shipping and built into the price, might as well just do it. That zero shipping, that free shipping, it's psychological. People love it. Even though it adds up to be the same and even though Amazon displays the prices in the same order by the lowest total cost, it's psychological, right? And it's frustrating for me to manually price items when some people have shipping, some don't. Like, ah, just, just go free shipping. Um, next question. I've just started selling books for Amazon FBA in the UK, and I found that Scout IQ doesn't work in the UK. Amazon Seller App is good, but you need to spend more time when you work out on the streets. Do you think any similar app I can use in the UK? Thanks. Yeah, so there's an app called Scoutly, formerly called FBA Scan. That's Scoutly, S-C-O-U-T-L-Y. Um, and they have a beta mode for UK database and Canada. So look into that. That could save you a lot of time. I have zero experience using the beta UK database. So I don't know if someone else is from the UK and they have used it and they're watching. Drop a little, drop a little hustler some help down there. Little helpful comment. Um, let's see. Uh, shameless plug. Jean Patoja says, how can I start this business step by step so I can get started tomorrow? Any tips, tips will be greatly appreciated. Go grab my free course at ReasyResales.com. You'll be on your way. Trust me. 
Uh, big shout out to the Kelly Hustle for the five dollar super chat. I appreciate it. Um, says full time job, fam reselling content. Struggle is real. Definitely, definitely, it's all real. No matter what level you're at, it's always real. I think for me, one of the most important things to think about is family is the only thing that matters to me, right? So like if I'm poor, if I'm rich, I'm always happy when I'm with my family and when I have my family, like that's the only thing that matters to me. It does, an extra thousand dollars, an extra twenty dollars, extra hundred dollars, an extra fifty thousand, whatever. None of that matters without my family. And so it's important for me to remember family first, family is most important. So Everything is hard. The struggle's real for everybody. Um, but remember what's actually important, right? Money comes and goes. You know what I mean? So pay attention to the things that matter. Uh, B squared says, I'm confused. If Target has it for less, speaking about um, a recent video I did called 16,000 Profit in One Week with my boy Patrick Akoba, who's also speaking at the event on uh, Sunday says, I'm confused. If Target has it for less, why would I pay more for it? How do you sell? Weird. The reason is, is because people aren't shopping at Target. They're shopping on Amazon, right? Because it's much more convenient than going to Target. So the average person doesn't even know that there's items cheaper at Target than there is on Amazon. And maybe they do know, but they're just happy to buy it on Amazon and not have to go to the store. Maybe they have to drive an hour to get to a Target, right? So you don't really know exactly why the consumer is paying more for a product they could get for less at Target. But my guess is, especially in the very, very profitable items, that they didn't know that it was on clearance at Target, right? And the other thing is that people like me and Pat, the resellers, we are quick to scoop up all of those good items. So they don't sit around the shelf for a very long time. So most people don't even know that that deal was available, even if they were in the store because someone got there before they did and scooped them all up. Okay. Very important to understand. Uh, let's see. Randall says just getting started in bulk when shipping a pallet, does UPS or whoever is picking up the shipment have the ability to get the pallet onto their truck? I'm currently working out of a storage building in my backyard, so I don't have a warehouse pallet jack or forklift. So yes and no. You can ask for what is called a lift gate service. When you're doing LTL shipping, that's less than truckload. That's when you're shipping a pallet on Amazon. I highly recommend it. We're able to get rates as low as 8 to 15 cents a pound when we ship pallets versus paying 25 to 50 cents a pound when we use UPS. So pallet shipping is the truth. Everyone should do it if you can hit high enough weight to make it worth it. It's simple. When you're in your shipping in the last stages of your shipment on Amazon, instead of clicking a uh, UPS carrier, click LTL less than truckload and go through it and work out the math and see what you would save if you would have shipped a pallet. Um, but to answer the question, you need to ask for a lift gate service. That means they have a powered lift gate on the truck that can lift the pallets up into the truck meaning you don't have a forklift, right? So lift gate service, and they will always have a pallet jack in the truck. You can't move pallets around inside the truck without a pallet jack. So every truck is always going to have, every truck driver will always have a pallet jack in the inside. And if they have a lift gate, they can get the pallet jack to your pallet, jack it up, and then take it to the gate and lift it into the truck. But they got to be able to get the pallet jack to where the pallet is, jack it up, and then pull it out. So if it's in your backyard and that's like a dirt backyard, you're going to have some problems. So if you have a cement backyard and there's a path to get through there and back there out to the front, you'll be okay. If not, I recommend building the pallet in your driveway. So take the pallet to your driveway, put the pallet down, then carry all the boxes out, put them on the pallet, then wrap it up. I have a video about this. Just search it. You'll find it. You'll be on your way. So hopefully that works out for you, bro. Um, this is not a question, but it's a comment, which I thought was a pretty teach, uh, teachable moment. Uh, they just says, in my city, the stores suck. And this comment is about retail arbitrage video. Smash the like real quick if you like what you're hearing. Um, and the truth is the stores in your city could suck, right? Or you could live where I live in Santa Cruz, California, and we don't even have a Walmart. I have to drive 30 or 40 miles in any direction just to get to a single Walmart. Some people have 10 Walmarts in their nearby area, right? So you don't really know if the stores suck in your area if you're not there every single day pounding the pavement. Because like I said, 
people like me are getting there before you and getting all the good products. And that's why the stores might suck. Or you actually just might not have a good retail arbitrage opportunities where you live, but maybe you have a good thrifting opportunity, or maybe it's a very literate area where you live. So the books are good, or maybe, I don't know, maybe there's a giant tractor parts manufacturing company in your town. So you're able to source tractor parts all the time for very cheap because, you know, 12% of the town works at the tractor factory or whatever. There is opportunities in every town. You just need to be able to recognize what opportunities are the best for you. And I'm going to give you a little tip right now. This is actually a big tip. And I learned this from Nicole State, um, State's Place on YouTube. And this is go to you, go to eBay, right? Search for completed sales, but change it to only show the radius of about five to 10 miles from your zip code or your city area. What this is going to show you is what people are selling who live in your area. Now you can study this and be like, wow, these are all successful eBay sellers who live in my area and these are the things they are selling. Maybe I can find these things too. That is, that is such a huge nugget. I hope you guys really understand that tip and take it to heart when you're trying to figure out what kind of stuff you can sell where you live and what kind of market you have. Uh, next is, I'm just going to read you the dialogue of this comment. Please smash the like button. We got 37 thumbs up and 150 people watching. So that means 120 of you guys haven't smashed the like button yet. So, um, someone says, Hey, I'm so, this is the comment on the Gary V interview, um, which I have, if you guys haven't seen that, go check it out. It, I think it's one of my best videos I've ever done. Although I could be biased. I'm a huge Gary V fanboy. So, um, this commenter said, I'm so excited to listen to this after watching a couple of your videos, but I had to shit you down. I'm pretty sure they meant to say shut you down. You'll hear why in a second. But I had to shit you down in the first 30 seconds because of the F-bombs and other language in front of my kid. WTH, I think that means what the heck, over, triple exclamation. You talk about keeping your comments respectful I hope you can do the same next time around. Come on, man. You're a dad. This is a public channel. And I'm just going to read you my actual reply because I don't want to like try and recreate it. I'm just going to read it to you. I said, with the utmost respect, I will always use the words I feel like using. A word choice isn't a big deal. There's much worse things to worry about in this world. And that's the same language I use at home. It's 2020, bro. Language is not as important as it once was. It's like how people used to frown on wearing a hat indoors. It's just not a big deal anymore. Also, you must not know who Gary V is because he cusses a lot. If that's turned you off to me, we probably weren't meant to be. But I do have a collection of videos that have no swearing on them on a PG-13 playlist on my channel. Check that shit out one time. I had to hit him with the check that shit out. So... If that's you, also, if you have to listen to my videos with headphones because of your shorties are around and you don't want them to hear my foul, terrible language, I apologize. That's just me doing me. But um, there is some videos on the PG-13 playlist, and you can check those out. I have made a decision to bleep out my cuss words on my edited videos, but on the live videos, it's just I got to roll with the flow. So I am sorry to this person. I mean no disrespect. Uh, next question says, is the e-flip business model still profitable now in 2020? Yes, it is. And for those of you that don't know what e-flip is, e-flip is a tool created by the book flipper that allows you to search Amazon for books that are underpriced or have a price disparity gap between merchant fulfilled and FBA. So you can buy books off of Amazon and then send them right back into Amazon and make profit selling them, whether you're buying them when the price is low during the off season and selling them when it's high, or whether there's, you know, one low price and everybody else's reprice or chase that price down. And then you buy all of them. You buy 20 copies of a book at, you know, five to 12 or 15 bucks. And now you have all of these books that sell for 15 bucks. You see what I'm saying? So unlike the stock market with the book game, it's very easy for you to wipe out a price wall and then name your own price once you have control of the stock, right? Very, very important. So check out eFlip if you want to do that. There's a link for a free trial down in the description. I have a few videos I've made on it, so go check those out if you want. 
Um, next question. Started FBA private label six months ago. Would like to get into this stuff as well. Find it quite hard to get stuff to make a decent profit in the UK. Most of the stuff I find is one pound profit. And by the time I've shipped it, have had is is one pound profit by the time I've shipped it. Have had some good Lego finds though. Yeah. So I'm not an expert in the UK market, but I can tell you that there is a lot of people doing RA in the UK. I do know people that are selling Nike shoes or trainers, as you call them, Nike trainers uh, to my UK followers and doing well. So it's definitely doable, but I recommend you to follow some UK resellers like Kevin Blackburn, Life Success Engineer. Um, a lot of people are on Instagram and not on YouTube. So there's Sylvia Tough Humans. There is uh, Luke Pastor, the book picker. He has a Facebook group. He's a UK reseller. He does books, but there's a lot of people in there that do other things other than books. Um, who else? We got, uh, oh, what is her name? Why am I at uh, Inch High Hustler? Inch High Hustler, also on Instagram. There is a great community of resellers on Instagram. If you're not there, go check it out. But if you want to figure out how to connect with these specific UK resellers, hit me up and I'll make sure you get, you know, find their Instagrams or their YouTubes or whatever so that you can connect with them. Cause I'm not an expert on UK stuff. Um, my buddy, Andy, who flies me out to speak at his event every year in London, um, his Instagram and YouTube is wholesale help. Check him out. Um, lots of good content. People are doing it guys. It's just, um, it's a little bit behind the US. You guys don't have as much demand as we do. Your population is not as consumer centric as we are. And Amazon didn't roll out there as quick as they did here. And by the time, here's the problem, guys. By the time Amazon rolled out fully to other countries, other countries had already copied their business model with all of their stuff. So people in the UK aren't as stoked about the shipping on Amazon because they've been able to get stuff shipped to them from Tesco in one day for a long time already. Tesco is like Walmart kind of, I think in the UK or like a quickie Mart or whatever. Anyways, they've already had same day shipping for a long time because they copied Amazon's business model. So unlike America, when, when Amazon rolled out in other countries, people weren't as shocked. It wasn't as much of a change to them. So they didn't jump on Amazon's jock as hard. You feel me? But in America, we were still doing like mail order, waiting like 12 to 14 days when Amazon rolled out the three to five day prime shipping. Of course, everyone is now used to like two day shipping, same day shipping, prime now, et cetera. Mark my words, Amazon is going to change the game again because they're going to make everyone get used to same day shipping, like three, one to three hour shipping. Trust me, last mile market, Amazon is going to rule the last mile market and is going to force all retail stores to have someone in their store that takes products to customers. Like I could call the skate shop and say, yeah, I'm going to buy this. Boom, 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 buy it. They will set it up and bring it to my house. And if they don't, Amazon will do it. So last mile marketplace is going to become a huge, huge thing. Mark my words on that one. Um, how can we sell brands on Amazon legally? Example, I want to sell Adidas shoes. So it's not about selling it legally. It's about Amazon allowing you to sell those brands on their website. There's two ways to do it. One way, you can get a distributor or a wholesaler that sells you Adidas, and then you can use those invoices to get approved from Amazon. You could literally make an Amazon account today, find a, a proper distributor or wholesaler, get Adidas from them. You'll need at least 10 units, submit the invoices and get approved on Amazon and then be able to sell Adidas right away. Or you can tough it out on Amazon selling what you can until you hit what is called maximum approval, which is an internal term inside of Amazon. And then Amazon will start allowing you to sell brands left and right. You'll apply to sell a brand and you'll just get approved right away without having to provide invoices. This is called auto ungating, right? Or hitting maximum approval, internal term on Amazon. So I know many people that have got approved to sell Nike, Star Wars, Hasbro, Disney, all the big stuff just from selling books very seriously for six months. So no one knows the full recipe. Is it amount of units sold? Is it amount of dollars made? No one knows. And if they did, I'm sure Amazon would change it. But those are the two ways that you can get approved to sell brands that you're restricted on selling in Amazon. Always, as a rule of thumb, when you come across a brand that you're restricted in, always request approval to sell it. 
You might get asked for invoices, in which case you either give up or go get invoices, or you might be surprised to see you get approved. Next question. Uh, yo, Reezy, on a quick note, I've been following you for a while and I'm inspired by you, bro. I have a quick question. Does Amazon still auto and gate Nike and Adidas for sellers that meet the anonymous tier? Yes, they do. I just explained that in the last question. I don't know why I even included that question. That was a double question. Um, next question. Uh, next question. That was the suspended question. Um, hey, Reezy, came across your videos on shoe hustling. Now you can sell Nike. So someone like me who's just starting out wouldn't be able to at this point. Correct. Also, what was the scanning app you were using in your Marshall's Hustle video? I believe in that video I was using Scoutify 2, which is a free scanning scouting app that only has live, not database, that comes free with an Inventory Lab subscription. Now, Inventory Lab is not free. It costs $50 a month. It's a full listing and accounting platform for Amazon sellers, mostly used by retail arbitrage sellers, mostly used by retail arbitrage, not fancied by booksellers. Um, it's a great platform. We were using it when we were selling shoes. And the fact that it comes with the free Scoutify app is just super sweet. Um, and the next part of the question says, is this something I can do in Ontario, buy and selling shoes? Yes, you can. Uh, I have a good friend, Rob Cosman. He actually moved to uh, Costa Rica from Canada and he made a good amount of money selling shoes on Amazon FBA in Canada and also shipping them over the border to the U.S. and selling them on U.S. Amazon FBA from Canada. So if that's not something you're aware of, cross-border services, there's services like Run in Red that will, and I've used them before, a great company, that will take your product over the border for you from Canada to America or from America to Canada and that's how you can easily get products into different marketplaces. And there is disparity between U.S. and Canada marketplace. And you can make money on products in Canada that you can't make money in the U.S. and vice versa. So check that stuff out. You don't have to be limited by, you know, where your country's at. Or you can even be like Watch Me Amazon who makes a good amount of money selling products wholesale in the U.K. So he makes good money in the U.S., but he also makes good money in the U.K., and part of that, um, I don't know if it's currently going on, but profiting off the fact of the currency exchange, right? Because the currency exchange changes. So there's a lot of opportunities with that. You're not stuck to one country. Um, another part of this question says, how do you determine what price to sell shoes at once you purchase them at the sale price? Market price. So when you're buying things that have a high cost of goods, your, your cash flow is tied up, right? So you can't afford to have your cat unless you have infinite money. You can't afford to have your cash flow tied up forever, right? Nor should you. This is a big mistake a lot of retail arbitrage sellers make is that you have to decide, do you want to hold on to your cash and not buy? Or do you want to turn it over and then get the money back and then buy more stuff? Because let's look at a scenario. Scenario one, you have an item, you bought it for whatever, and it takes six months to sell, right? But some, most of the items you bought sell 30 days, right? Most, let's say like 50 or 70% of the items you buy sell within 30 days and the rest take six months to sell if you're trying to capture the higher end of the market price, right? It would be better to sell those 30, 20 to 30% of those items at a loss or a break even just so you could get your money back and re-roll the dice so that you can get more of those items that sell within 30 days because do a little chart, break out your little notebook or whatever, your calculator and clack it up. Turning your money over more times in that six month period is much more valuable. That's what you want to do. Your opportunity cost of quick flips with your capital, capital, capital is lost when you hold on to it because you marry your inventory. Do not marry your inventory. Be smart. If your inventory is expensive, like shoes or other retail arbitrage, Turn it over so you can get the money back and try again. If your inventory is books that you got for a dollar, it's not as important, which is why I struggled to learn this concept because I came from selling only books for a decade and then went really hard into retail arbitrage. That's it for the questions that I had prepared. Now, let me see if, if there's any more questions. Uh...
let's see. Oh, we got some beef in the chat. We got beef. Uh, let's see. Sunlight Magic says, I currently sell clothing. I only shop at the bins. I'm thinking of selling books on Amazon as well. Would you recommend shopping for books from the bins? Sure. If you can keep up with the people in the bins that are most likely being straight savages. Do you know how savage booksellers are, especially at the bins? They're the most savage people at the bins. They go way more savage than the clothing dealers, way more savage than the shoe dealers. Go ahead. Try to get in that water. If you can, go for it. Uh, newbie here. What is up with send to Amazon system? Did it change? I can't create a shipping plan with multiple items in the same box. It worked this morning, but not tonight. Um, I don't know about your specific situation, hot tip Heidi, but we've been having troubles combining shipping plans as well because we ship shipments of over 2000 units and Amazon has a limit of 2000 units per shipping plan. So we always have to create multiple shipping plans and then one of them gets turned into a shipment and then you add the other shipping plans to the existing shipment, shipping plan, shipment, different things. But for some reason, it's currently not letting us combine the shipping plans that are going to, you know, warehouse one with shipments that are also going to warehouse one, even though they're all the same. We don't know why Amazon customer service is much less than helpful. They literally tried to tell me that you can't do that. And then I have to screenshot their own rules and show it to them so they can go, oh, I guess you can. So it's very frustrating dealing with Amazon bullshit. That's what we call it, ABS. Um, but, you know, especially when you have employees that want to work or you're losing time, um, et cetera. And so yeah, I don't know the answer to that. I can just say, you know, keep trying. I think there is a glitch with Amazon right now. Uh, hey, Reezy, just curious. Why does Scout IQ not show a lot of the FBA offers that Amazon seller app shows? I scan a book, then look it up on the app. It looks like it's a buy when Scout IQ says no. So the reason the any app doesn't show all of the data that the Amazon seller app does is because those apps are using Amazon's API and Amazon limits the API to the lowest 20 bucket offers. Google that because I can't explain it to you right now. So you're limited. You get like the low, you get the buy box for use the new and the 20 lowest total offers. So if there's offers that are outside of that range, you're not going to see them. Right. And I always tell people it's important to double check all of your buys, right? So all of your items that you're going to actually buy, scan those in live mode and actually click through to get to the Amazon page to see the actual offers just to double check them. What is your average sell-through rate for books when it isn't textbook season? You should sell about 1% of your inventory daily. Uh, glad to see you live again, Reezy. Plan to check out your Amazon guide this month finally. Check it out. It's free. It's waiting for you. Uh, smash the like button real quick, guys. Uh, let's see. Um, why are my books taking forever to list on Amazon? And it says zero FBA, even though it's in stock. I'm not so sure about that. There's a lot of weird stuff with inventory when it's on its way to Amazon. It's inactive till it gets there. Then it will be active. Um, let's see. Reezy, what mixer are you going, uh, with your new SM7B? I purchased the Rodecaster Pro. So a couple of my buddies that do are YouTubers and have nice podcasts talked me into it, and I'm hoping I like it. One really cool thing about the Rodecaster Pro is that it supports uh, connecting to phones and also even with Bluetooth. So I will no longer have to have callers call in on speakerphone and hold it up to the microphone. It'll just be super pro, and I'll even be able to control the caller's volume separately from my volume. And it does multi-track and... Uh, regular mixed recordings to the micro SD card on the unit. So as soon as the show's over, I'll have the files ready to go already on a micro SD card. And there will be no more uh, low quality ripping the audio off of YouTube videos. Cause currently every audio on my podcast podcast is actually ripped off of the YouTube videos. And so the quality is not that great. I understand it's all right. But if you listen to a great podcast using, you know, this SM7B microphone, and then you listen to my podcast right after, it probably makes you want to throw up or 
I mean, you get used to it. You know what I mean? So like if you're listening to my podcast, it's probably like an hour or two hours and you're like, whatever, it's good enough. But then someone comes on with like a really good microphone and you're like, oh, Reezy's podcast actually kind of sounded crappy. And so we're trying to upgrade the quality for you. Uh, did they do away with the individual seller account? No, they did not, Gigi. You can still find it. They just make it hard to find it. And if you guys go to TikTok, I made a video on my TikTok that shows, yeah, follow me on TikTok. I'm that old guy that's on TikTok trying not to be so old. On my TikTok video, I made on my TikTok video, on my TikTok account, I made a video showing you how to find the free Amazon seller plan because they try to block it or they try to make it hard to find, but it's still there. You can still sell on Amazon for free. Or you can actually sign up for the paid plan if it's just easier for you and then call seller support and downgrade to the free plan. Uh, yeah, sometimes Amazon screws things up or takes about 21 days to have your inventory updated. You can try and get a hold of them. Sometimes it speeds it up because they notice the error. Also, that kind of reminded me a lot of what Amazon does too is they redistribute your inventory. So you might send all of your inventory to one warehouse and then they might immediately put it into four different trucks and send it to four different warehouses. I don't know why they do all this, but I'm happy because it allows me to send my inventory to one place instead of having to send it to four places. But your inventory is like getting distributed and it's not available for sale yet usually. Uh, I got the e-yo-yo and it makes a lot of noise. Is that normal? No. What kind of noise are you talking about? If you're talking about beeping when you scan, you need to disable the beep when you scan and that barcode should be in the booklet that came with the scanner. Ah. Not just the beeping, it's like an air conditioner. Yeah, that's not normal. Which uh, e-yo-yo scanner did you get? That's totally not normal. Uh, some of the scanners do have vibrate, so that might be what we're talking about. You might want to turn down the vibration. Crazy question, but how long does the coronavirus stay alive? As long as the media keeps talking about it. Uh, FBA made me ship to three places, and they still ended up transferring to other locations. Uh, face palm on that one. Uh, what happened to your account, bro? So this video is not about my account. This video is about me answering that question from other people who ask me that question. So earlier in the video, I answered that question that someone had sent me saying they got their Amazon account shut down and they wanted to know what to do. So I crafted a beautifully clickbaity title to get you guys to show up here. And then I provided a lot of value. So hopefully I provided enough value that you guys don't hate me for the clickbaitness because that's just how YouTube works, guys. The good part is that you're here, we're here, and we're all learning. If you're watching and you're not subscribed to the channel, subscribe. The link is down there below. It should be one of the first links down there. If you guys don't know how to sell on Amazon still, I made a free course. It'll take you like four to six hours to go through. Completely free. No upsell, nothing. Completely free. Go to my website. There it is, dot com. Dot com. Shout out Steve Rakin because he coined dot com. Genius move of his. Um, and that will get you in the game. And also, I have a lot of links down below for different softwares and products that I use that I actually use and recommend, not just shit I put down there to make money. And check it out. can save you guys some time. Question, if I do FBA, would it be smart to be in a variety of niches, for example, selling sandals, then computer monitors and silverware? Do you think variety is successful in FBA? I do think... It doesn't matter so much, but it kind of does. And here is why. Most people that I know that are very successful on Amazon focus on one business model. They're either a shoe seller. They're a clothing seller. They do only retail arbitrage, only wholesale, only private label, and maybe even only in certain niches of private label. They sell only books, right? They sell only video games. They sell only electronics like for some reason, it just seems to be that most people that are very successful resellers have a few areas of focus, if not one general overarching area of focus. All I can say is that 
if you're going to be, you know, you're either, it's hard to be like, yo, I'm a thrifter and I do retail arbitrage and I do wholesale. I don't know a lot of people that are successful in that because they're very divided, right? But if you're doing wholesale, it you could sell all kinds of different items. It's still wholesale, right? But if you're doing private label, you're probably going to keep it into certain niches that you know about or have more insight into. And it would be smart to make products that build off of your other existing products. But if you're thrifting, yard selling, you need to be a thrift army knife. You need to know as much as you can about everything. You need to be in love with searching completed sales on eBay. Like that needs to be your pastime is you just go look at completed sales on eBay for hours and you just love it. Looking, spying at other people's stores, seeing what they sell, sold, watching what sold videos on YouTube at like two to three X because you really don't want to hear people talk and all the fluff. You just want to see the items and the brand names and what they sold for, pack your head full of all that information so that when you hit the streets, you're more likely to see more stuff that you can sell. But I do not think that variety works as a general focus. Even on YouTube, variety doesn't work. My channel is about reselling. If I try to stuff family content down your throat or all of a sudden start posting a bunch of me skateboarding videos, it'll be fucking cool, but you're not going to watch it and my views are going to tank. You know what I mean? This channel is reselling on YouTube. Variety doesn't really work. People want to go see one thing, right? And so they tune into that. And from the creator side, if I try to do a channel about skateboarding and a channel about me rapping and a family channel, that shit's going to be way too stressful, especially starting out and having to edit all the videos. Like I have a family channel. Check it out. Reezy Fam Vlogs, shameless plug, subscribe, look it up. That's just me and my family having fun but I can afford to hire a video editor because of this channel. And that money is going towards the editor to help me make videos for this channel and the family channel. But if I was starting from scratch, it would be so stressful for me to try and edit videos for this channel and for that channel. It would be ridiculous. So I'm not a big fan of spreading yourself thin and trying a bunch of different stuff. Try one thing, stick with it. If it works really, really well, automate it and try to remove yourself and then learn a new thing and do another thing. You say you're a Star Trek fan. Does that include Deep Space Nine? So I do like Deep Space Nine. I like all Star Treks. I would say the original Star Trek or the cartoon series is probably my least liked Star Trek. Um, I don't know why. The just production is just really terrible on old Star Trek. But uh, DS9 is, is like right there. It's like the second worst Star Trek ever. Um, you know, but I do, I got love for Quark and my Ferengi, Ferengi, Ferengi. What is that money that they always have? Is it Latinum, Latinum bars? It was kind of cool. It did have a military vibe though. And I'm not really into military stuff at all. Um, let's see. I can't keep up with all of the comments. Um, so apparently I said something that was incorrect and some people didn't like that. So comment and let me know what you guys are talking about so we can address this issue because I definitely don't feel like I said anything that was incorrect. But I do talk a lot and I am live, so I'm liable to maybe say something incorrectly. Have you tried online arbitrage, Reezy? Yes. Um, the preferred tool is tactical arbitrage. So check that out. There's a link down below to try tactical arbitrage. The creator, Alex Moss, did a show with me. Um, watch that show. I interviewed him. Also, I did a show with Christopher Grant, another Reezy Talks, who's also really good at tactical arbitrage. Check that out. Those are probably the two best videos on my channel for checking out tactical arbitrage. Are selling school textbooks good? Yes, definitely. Why Why are my books taking forever to list on Amazon? You already asked that question. Star Trek Voyager, definitely probably my favorite Star Trek, though I am real big into uh, Star Trek Discovery. I can't wait for season three to start. And uh, I even like the new one, Picard, which is... Seems to be controversial. A lot of people don't like either of those. Uh, let's see. Okay, so 
you were wrong about MAC addresses and APIs. Um, I don't believe so at all. Definitely not. I know Amazon can track MAC addresses, and you do not want to sign into different Amazon accounts from the same laptop. The laptop has a MAC address, right? Your computer has a MAC address. I'm not an idiot. And your router, or your router, your modem, not your router, sorry, has the IP address. But you could use an IP rotator. Uh, beyond that, I'm not that technical, so I don't want to get too fancy. And I was definitely not wrong about the API. Amazon limits the amount of information that third-party apps can get through their API, and they do limit you to the lowest 20 bucket offers on the API that the database apps use. Let's see. Do I need an LLC to do Amazon? No, you don't. MAC addresses never leave a home network. I believe the MAC address is tied to the device. I'm excited about your book business. I know you're busy. Are you going to make more videos of the day-to-day -day at the business? I will, but currently we are still in the growth phase and there is so much issues. Like I make a rule on Monday and on Tuesday, I just go, that was the dumbest thing ever. Let's not do that. Let's try something else. So I've made some videos at the new warehouse. I will probably make an update video pretty soon. Um, and I'll make like little pieces of videos, but everything is just not that well. It's not that great yet how we're doing stuff. So I don't really feel comfortable showing the whole process because we're just figuring everything out. Let's see. Uh, 1969 Ronnie says, I have been suspended by Amazon. I requested my Amazon payment from a deactivated seller's computer. Yeah, that's a huge, huge danger, guys. The MAC address thing is a bigger issue than the IP address. Um, you can, it, I'm not saying you can, but it's not as big of a red flag to Amazon's system because, for example, you could have four roommates in a house and they all have Amazon accounts. So that's not really a big deal. And a lot of people are casual Amazon sellers that just sell a few things here and there. But you do not want to sign in to your Amazon account on another person's device. It's not a good idea. I did already included the information in earlier in the video about how to set up an Amazon account. Are selling school textbooks any good? Yes, they are. They're definitely very good. Uh, M Emra says, is this live? Meaning, is he reading the chat? Yes, I am reading the chat. Uh, will your course be enough for me to get started? Yes. The free course to Amazon is designed like this. So in my day-to-day -day life, people constantly will ask me, like, what do you do? And I will tell them, and then their eyes gloss over, and that really hurts my soul because I put my heart and soul into speaking and talking to people and sharing information. So at one point, I just realized, yo, I need to just distill all of that into a course so that when people ask me, I can just say, hey, I made a free course on my website. If you want to know, go check it out. It's too much for me to explain to you right now. And if they really want to know, they'll go watch the free course and they'll figure it out and it will save me, you know, I'm leveraging my time and saving myself from having that bad feeling I get when I try to help someone and then they didn't really, they didn't want to help themselves. Hype Direct says, I'm just about to hit 2,000 sales on Amazon on my first month. Congratulations. Uh, not clearing, that's actually a good tip. Someone says, not clearing browser cache is what gets you in trouble using multiple accounts. Definitely clearing your browser ca cache has had some effects. So I've actually had times where I was having problems like making a shipment or seeing certain information in the manage inventory page. And that clearing the browser cache would save it or actually switching to another browser, which is the same thing because those browsers don't have those pages cached. Um, so that's actually a great tip. Thank you for that, buddy. Um, someone says, make another YouTube. I'll watch. Uh, what do I need to make this my full-time job? How much inventory should I have to make this return 5,000 a month? Sorry, might be a stupid question. Definitely not a stupid question. So do the math on this, at least for books. If you expect to sell 
1% of your inventory per day, and I'm not going to do per day, and I'm not going to do this math right here because it's hard to do it live calculations while I'm trying to keep your attention and speak to you. But if you're selling 1% of your inventory a day, let's just say you have 100 items. That means you're selling one item a day, and then you, you need to put another item back the next day to continue to sell one item. But you sell one item a day, and if you're making $10 profit, that means you're making $10 a day. And if you have, um, but you need to take $1 out of that 10 to buy that other book, right? If the books cost a dollar, so then you're actually making $9 a day and then putting $1 back each day. But let's just say 10 because it's easier math. So that would be 300 profit in a month, 30 days in a month, $10 profit a day, 300. So if $10 profit is your average profit, not your average sale price, your average profit, what goes to your Amazon account, your payout, right? Um, just scale it off there. So it's a very simple mathematic formula, but if you know you can expect to sell 1% of your inventory, which is pretty average for booksellers per day, scale it from there. And then all you need to know is get really in touch with your margins and your average unit profit and your cost of goods and just go from there. It's a formula. You can do it. You get Everyone gets 24 hours a day. You got eight hours to sleep. You got eight hours to work. You got eight more hours a day. That means you could do four with your family and four working on your grind, whether you're going to look for books on your lunchtime or whatever. The goal is to quit your job and to live the life you want to live. And you got to figure out how to do it while you're still working your other job until this income at least looks like it's going to exceed the other income. For some people, they might want to have a month of savings. Other people might want to have three months. Other people might want to have six months, right? Some people might be able to live and times would be a little tough, but they might be able to live off of one spouse's salary, right? And then you could just jump in and figure it out. You also have to consider healthcare. Healthcare is very expensive. A lot of people keep, you know, their partner employed by the company or the corporate job. That way the family can have healthcare because healthcare is extremely expensive. You're talking at least like $400 per person per adult for healthcare. And that's not even for a very good healthcare plan. Do you have to have a credit card to make a seller account? I believe you do. Other than Marshall's, what other stores have you scored shoes for resale? So there's a lot of places, obviously Ross, which is very similar to Marshall's. You've got the Nike factory outlet. You've got Burlington's. You've got um, DSW, that's Designer Shoe Warehouse. You also have, uh, there's a really good store called Off-Broadway. If you have Off-Broadway near you, check that out. They do um, tax exemption. There's all kinds of deals. Um, if you have someone who is a veteran that can come with you or an active military person, then you can get military discount, which is even huger on top of all those things. What is the difference between new and collectible in toys? Uh, new is new and collectible is not new. Also, most people don't really shop in the collectible. You know, they don't, they like see it and it just like looks weird to them. You know what I mean? So my advice, and this is my advice. I'm not like the... I'm not the freaking Oracle of anything. I know a lot and I share what I know with you guys, but I do make mistakes. Also, my advice is to sell collectible items on eBay. Take a lot of photographs, take 20 pictures with great lighting, describe everything greatly and put it on eBay. People who collect stuff shop on eBay. Reezy, do you recommend hiring a consulting firm to aid in getting your suspended account unsuspended? Yes and no. If you can research what a plan of action is and how to make one, and I know you can find it on YouTube or on Google, try that yourself before you go to have someone else help you because I've had very mixed reviews. Some people you know, will do really well getting a lot of people unsuspended, and then they will ghost you know, five or 10 people and not give them their money back. So it's kind of a shady business. Let's see. All right. I did remove that bot from the chat. Thank you. If you want to see a real economic entrepreneurial sustained boom in this country, universal health healthcare would give it that. I do believe, you know, I believe we should have universal health care. A lot of other countries have it. And when I go to these countries, they laugh at us. They seriously laugh at us. We're, we're supposedly, you know, 
the 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 best country, you know, or or a lot of people would say we're the best country. We're definitely probably the country that's the easiest to make money and start a business in, but we have some of the least educated population, you know, the highest drug and mental health issues and the largest incarcerated population. So how can we be number one when we have all of those issues and we don't have universal health care? Let me see. Hide user. Did we hide user? Let's try and hide this user. Hide user. Boom. See ya. Awesome. Money Badger, what is up? Thank you for the uh, the $2 beer money. I really appreciate that, M&M. -M -M. Uh, Surf says, if I were looking for an investor for resale arbitrage, what do you think the best way to go about that is? What's a good split in percentages if I'm doing all the work? That is hard to say. Are, how much money are they going to give you? Are they going to continuously bankroll you? You know what I mean? Um, I would say, you know, definitely no more than 50 50. You deserve at least half of the money, if not, you know, 60 40 or maybe 75 25. Um, the work is much harder than the money, but the money is more risky. You know what I mean? So I don't know. I don't really feel qualified to answer that. Whatever is comfortable for you and for that person that you agree on, that's what you should do. But I do believe you should also stipulate hard rules about how you're going to handle you know, inventory that takes longer to sell. Are you going to push for the buy box? Are you going to try and get your cash flow back as soon as possible? All of these things. SD... SU Miguel says just flipped a $2 yard sale buy for 80 plus shipping on eBay. Awesome. What was your highest selling item period? So the highest item, the largest sale that I've ever had, I sold a doll that I got for a couple bucks at a yard sale. It was a Blythe doll, B-L-Y-T-H-E. It was a ninth. 1978, I believe, Kenner brand version. Um, this doll has a pull string, and when you pull it, the eyes blink and change color. There's a huge cult following behind these, and I just got lucky that year is the most desirable one. And if I'm not mistaken, we sold it for we sold it for like 1,200, and it got returned because the arm falls off, and I didn't disclose it. And then I relisted it, showed pictures of the arm falling off, and fully disclosed it, and it sold for 1,700. So that's my best flip ever. Um, just random because this is also in my head. A friend of mine, Brittany, she said she recently found a rug at the bins for $7 and then sold it for $700 on Craigslist. She recognized the style as being currently popular. And it was a style that was popular in the last couple years because she's very familiar with home decor. And then she recognized the maker on the tag and they only make really expensive stuff. So it was like a $1,600 retail price rug that she probably cleaned and then sold for 700 on Craigslist. So $7 to 700. Yes, that's the home run. That's not the sale that you make every day, but that kind of stuff is happening every single day in many places at once. Do you have advice for selling thousands of mint condition Pokemon cards, all varying prices? Okay, so I don't know anything about Pokemon cards except for that all of the Pokemon cards I've ever found were not worth a damn thing. But my friend Mike, um, his Instagram is Miggity Miggity Mike. He also has a YouTube channel, just like how it sounds, Miggity, M-I-G-G-I-D-Y, Miggity Miggity Mike. Um, he knows a lot about Pokemon cards. He used to collect Pokemon cards and he's recently sold some Pokemon cards. So if you send him a message on Instagram, he could probably give you some advice about that. Let's see. Is if you make money, you pay taxes in the US? Yep, you definitely do. It's a it's a good first world problem to have. Smash the like button, guys. There is 82 thumbs up and 151 concurrent viewers. I appreciate all of you guys for hanging out with uh, my recently tattooed face and hand. And check that sweet bird out. And, uh, you know, it's late night. You guys could do a lot of different things, but you're hanging out with me, and I appreciate that. 
Reese, how many copies of Four Hour Work Week you think you flipped in your life? A lot, but not as many as like The Secret or The Night or The Power of Now or um, geez, why am I at a loss? Or you know, Guns, Germs, and Steel or all of these super popular books that I have like ten copies of every book in a shipment right now. Uh, thanks, man. I sold a lot over the years, some from a buck all the way to 500 each. Just got to know what to look for. That is definitely the truth. Are Beanie Babies dead? Uh, I don't know anything about Beanie Babies either, other than every time I've ever found a bunch of them, they weren't worth anything. So to me, I try to stay away from them. If you're watching this and you know about Beanie Babies, please drop some knowledge down below because I feel like they are dead. Um, but if they're not, let me know. Let other people know. Provide some value in the community. Had my inventory up to 1,400 books and did 15,000 sales. Ended up getting sick and I'm finally up past that level again, but sales aren't the same. Any thoughts why? It could be the time of year. It could be your repricer. Um, it could be maybe your inventory score is not so good, so you're not getting the buy box. Just check all that inf all of those things out. Should I buy liquidation items, bro? I don't know. Maybe you should, bro. Check them out. Sometimes they come with a manifest and you can compare those um, against Amazon using some apps and software before you even buy them to see if it could be worth it for you. Yo, finally got eBay account to cover 100,000 active listings. Now time to concentrate on Amazon. Hell yeah. That's what's up. Got your account to over 100,000 active listings. That is what is up. That's a lot of work. That is a lot of work. Um, Beanie Babies equal dog chew toy. <laughs> That's how I feel. Uh, shout out Money Badger for the $5 super chat. Go check out uh, William Shirley. That's the Money Badger. YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. He's killing it on TikTok. More followers than me on TikTok. Tell us about ReezyCon or whatever it's called. So this is not the event that I'm hosting this weekend is not ReezyCon. It is called Reezy Ranch Retreat or whatever we're calling it. It doesn't really have a name. I guess we're calling it the Reezy Ranch Retreat, but it is like the beta version of ReezyCon, uh, the, the pre-quill to ReezyCon, if you must. Um, but it's two days in a ranch chateau. And we spent way too much money on the uh, ranch and we barely broke even. Um, but dinner is included for two nights. There is seven speakers. Um, if you include myself, eight speakers. Um, and we are going to do a private tour of my warehouse. And then there will be a dinner out paid. Then there will be uh, networking at the house sponsored by Empathy Wines. So shout out Empathy Wines. The event is also sponsored by Scout IQ. Thank you, Scout IQ. There will be they will be providing lunch on Sunday, the speaking day. Also, Payability sponsored the event, and Cat and Cloud Coffee sponsored the event. They're going to provide coffee. Um, the co-founders of Cat and Cloud Coffee are speaking there. Um, also, Scott Needham, the Smartest Seller podcast. He's sold over three hundred and fifty million on Amazon and does six million a year, I believe, maybe more, um, in the wholesale department on Amazon. He's going to be speaking there. Um, Watch me, Amazon co-signed him, so you know it's going to be a good one. Um, my good buddy, Danny Keith, who was actually the last guy I worked for a, a millennia ago, he's speaking there. He's done a TEDx talk, and he's also he's been in an entrepreneur forever, um, but he recently sold a business called Cannabis Club TV. It's a uh, CCTV ads inside of cannabis shops, dispensaries, and head shops. And their company was recently acquired. And he's going to talk about how he started that up from a TV in his garage to a big company that partnered with Tommy Chong and then was acquired um, by a bigger company. So that's going to be great. We have Ryan Brown, who's going to be talking about Airbnb. He did 250,000 net profit off of his 17 properties on Airbnb last year and was featured on HDTV Tiny House Hunters. So that's going to be awesome. Monica Gamboa, the posh hanger is going to be speaking there. You guys know who she is. She's a beast. Um, Patrick Acoba is, is Prophet Pat on YouTube and Instagram. He's going to be speaking there. He did 725,000 gross sales doing all OA and RA last year using BrickSeek and uh, retail stores. And that was only his third full year on Amazon. And his goal is to 
profit as much as he can off Amazon and throw that money into realty. His family does realty as a background in realty. He's already sold a house and I believe he's on his way to selling his second house. So that's going to be interesting to, to hear about, you know, the Amazon hustle to realty. And of course me. Um, yeah. And, and, uh, Jared and Chris, the co-founders of cat and cloud coffee are going to be talking about building a business let me actually, I want to look up my phone so I don't misquote uh, their thing, but they were very specific about what they wanted the cards to say um, for them. And it says, helping to build a world where businesses put people and purpose before profit. So they don't want me to talk about this in the ads, but I'll tell you right here, in the last four years, they grew their cafe from a podcast to four cafes and a roastery and having over 64 team members. Um, my daughter works for them. They take care of their employees and it's a very good company. So I'm excited to learn from them. They inspire me. Um, but yeah, that's it. We're going to do that event. There's one ticket left. So if you're watching this and you want to get in on that spot, it's not cheap. It's 500 bucks for a bed in a shared room or 750 for a private room for two nights. And you can bring a guest and remember, dinner is included both nights and breakfast, both nights and lunch on the Sunday during the speaking event is also included. So if you guys want to show up, there's like one spot left. So send me a DM on Instagram or Twitter or send me an email, resells at gmail.com and claim your spot. Tonight would probably be uh, the best time to do it before it sells out. I love you guys. It's been real. Smash a like button before I end the broadcast. Drop comments down below if you didn't get those answered, but I am going to go downstairs and hopefully my family didn't fall asleep yet because it is 1049 on a weeknight, but time to go downstairs and kick it with them. I love you guys. Have a good night and I'll see you on the next broadcast. Peace.